Sensitivity is intelligence. With grace and skill, you have abundance. Welcome to the Psychic Hour. Host Kelly Brickle is a psychic medium healer, numerologist, and teacher. Her passions are learning about the soul and energy. Whether it's through spirit, emotion, or vibrational numbers, there's always a pathway of information waiting to help. Now, here is your host of the Psychic Hour, Kelly Brickle. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Psychic Hour on WLTKDB. Let's talk radio. This is a show where we talk about all things psychic, mediumship, intuition, spirituality, and every topic has a little bit of a different insight. Every guest has a bit of a different journey. So uh, we have an interview show today and we have medium Adam Bernstein on with us that will be on in just a moment. And so I'm excited to talk to him about his latest discoveries and development with his own mediumship, uh, psychic and um, coaching that he does. He does a lot of different things. And I think, hey, Kevin, hey, Courtney, hey, everyone coming in. I think it's so awesome to talk to people because every year, yes, people within their work um, know their mission and they have these main things that they share and they gift to people that they help, right? Whether it's clients or people that they help around them as they go. But there's these other talents that shape within a person year to year. And also um, there's focuses a little bit different every year. And sometimes you'd be surprised that your favorite psychic medium or healer, they also might have other offerings. Um, You know, I I talk to people frequently and I go, wow, okay, you do that too. Um, Or sometimes people, you know, are surprised. You know, there's people that I've been working with for over five years and sometimes they're like, wait, you do this type of reading too? Or (laughs) I'm just like, yeah. It's on. It, it, the information's up there, but you know, it, we just have information overload and we just really are attracted to naturally what we're attracted to, whether people are in our tribe or whether we need something specifically. And we're just grateful for that. So, um, a lot is what makes up us our experiences, our talents, our passions, um, so many different things. And so one of the topics of the day that I kind of wanted to get into was highlighting a little bit of that, the amalgamation of our experiences and talking about intention and the aura and kind of how it works um, with a different facet about Not only what we um, say or have like mantras or intentions like verbally or internally for ourselves, but also what we admit, what we admit with um, our consciousness and awareness of what we are putting out. And so I think it's really important because with our intention, that's only sometimes as good as our awareness, like What are we looking to heal? What are we looking to shape? What are we looking to amplify? And we are the collection of so much energy with all of our totality of experiences, this life and previous lives. And really, when we go out into the world, we're just sharing energy constantly. Even when we aren't going out into the world, we're sharing energy constantly. But just imagine when you're walking out of your front door, you're just like this you know, essentially the sun emitting all this energy. And you can think about it like the aura, right? Everyone has auras and they have all this changing energy within the aura. Um, and we have many different layers to our aura. And, and and that's something just in itself that is just so fascinating to talk about because there's people who have mapped, let's say, seven layers of the aura um, or more than that. But there's like um, the etheric layer and that's sometimes how – and I like to talk about that because when people are first practicing and understanding about their energy and they feel like, let's say, a gentle heat or energy field coming off of them, sometimes they're picking up the etheric layer uh, first. It's the closest to your skin and sometimes you'll see like color just like – 
um, outlined of your body or another person's body. And then um, you go to the emotional layer and the mental layer and the astral layer and the etheric template. I'm going to list them all this, the celestial layer and the etheric template. So those are some of the ones that are, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. And I'm, I'm always wrapping my head around what each means fully, but they all have different um, space that they take up around your energy, around your body, around, um, your spirit. And they are all felt to a certain degree, but not consciously from people. Um, for people who let's say are more sensitive to energy, they'll probably pick up very easily, um, to a certain degree, right? Everyone's different. The first three layers of the aura, because that's like, sometimes our physical vitality, our emotions, and kind of where our mental state is. And we're like emitting that. And that's why, um, of course, there's certain things that you can physically see if someone's like well or chipper or happy, right? Um, if they have good vibes or bad vibes when you first meet them. But um, we're picking up all this information about how someone emotionally is, how someone mentally is, and like physically kind of what they're they're dealing with. Um, and the more aware we are, the more information we can uptake. So then it goes into kind of like the intention and um, how we step out within our energy. And so some people have these like daily beautiful intentions of, you know, what they want to put out. Um, I, I kind of think about the one with Benjamin Frank Franklin, I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? And they emit that energy and the more they believe it. So the more you believe it, um, the more that you amplify like health, wealth and wisdom, right? And you will be attracted and the universe will show you things that help you understand about wealth, health, and wisdom. So it's not just the words for saying the words and feeling the vibration of the words, but also like what the words like help you find, experience, and become. And um, those words can be, let's say, swirling around you on a very mental level. And you're like, oh, okay, this person has goals. This person has intention, right? This person is focused. It's, this person's very business focused or very um, health focused. Or it could be like an emotional vibration of, wow, this person just has like this calming, even vitality. Or this person, um, wow, really, there's every time they speak, there's so much um information that I value within their voice. Wow, they're really intelligent. Um, and then there's like that physical vibration where they just seem very sound and together and very sharp and very um, collected. So whether it's the intention swirling around you or your actual amalgamation of experiences, people share energy and they feel you and they sense you. And we're always doing the best we can, right? Sometimes we're just maintaining a vibration because we're still learning about it. Sometimes let's say we're having a difficult day or a hard week or a hard year and we find ourselves bumpy, but this is very much who we are. And if it's very much who we are uncontested, it's always in our vibration. I think that's kind of the biggest thing that I want to share. Um, we go through a lot of things in life, right? Whether it's rocky relationships, rocky health, uh, rocky circumstance, like with even, let's say, job opportunities. And if we really believe in our core, like I am this, like I am, you know, worthy of having this or I will find this or I, I just know that it's going to be OK. If you really believe it like within the core fundamentals of your energy, you will attract that to you because it is uncontested. It's it's what you are and it's what you attract. And people feel that, that, that power and that calm within just your knowing. You're like, it's all going to be okay. It's going to come my way. And so I would invite you to go into your energy and go into your intentions. And it's just like, you know, we're always learning more about ourselves, like how to surrender and believe and understand and know, but how in all of your experiences of you, do you feel about the intentions that you put out there? How in all of your experiences do you feel unshakable in some of the things within what you are and what do you know for certain? And 
that is the strongest energy that's amplifying when you walk through the world and you speak and meet and greet people and help to influence and share with what others feel in your presence. And so with that said, um, yeah, get curious and have fun with your energy. Why not, right? There's so much worth with what it does for others and for you. And um, I encourage you to learn more about your aura and what you are attracting. So yes, with that said, we are going to take a a break and then we're going to bring in Adam. And hello to everyone coming in. Hello. We're back. Welcome back. Just like that. Let's bring in Adam. Hello. Hey, Adam. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on this amazing show. I so appreciate it. And Absolutely. Appreciate you. I appreciate you too. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm so happy to talk to you and, and just hear what you are up to and, and working with. And, and first, I want to introduce you to everybody listening And so with that said, Adam Bernstein is a psychic medium and channel with an international following. He was included as New York's, one of New York's top psychics in the book, Psychic New York, an Esoteric Guide to New York, as well as having numerous TV and radio appearances. Um, Adam teaches throughout the year and leads seminars and development circles in the arts of spirit communications, psychic development, as well as universal laws and success and attraction. He does individual readings as well as gallery sessions, and he reaches a wide variety of topics um, with his teachings, as well with the topics of power attunement, energy healing, and teaching about energy as well through his Reiki master teachings. Welcome to the show, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. What a lovely introduction. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, I always try to like celebrate people for what they've done and they're working on and have accomplished because it's just, it's a lot of heart and dedication in this work. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, and I probably don't have to tell you, could you do similar work, but, you know, we, we, we may be like mediums or psychics, but that's kind of our job. It's really a 24-7 uh, full-on spiritual practice that we're engaged in here. So it's you know, part of my work to be a medium and, and to be able to work with the public. You know, I have, a, you know, I get up, I do my morning breathing, my meditation. I, I, I'm i big into like cold plunges, like cold therapy. So I do that in the morning, do my work, do my yoga. Then I have my evening routine and uh, and work when I'm sleeping also. And it's really, you know, in my way of thinking, you know, being a, a medium, I mean, talking to the dead is really the tip of the iceberg. It's a really a, a spiritual path unto itself. And, you know, a lot of the yoga and, and all the other training that I do really supports that work. So uh, nice to be appreciated for, for that. Absolutely. Um, how do you find that your morning routine um, and routine throughout the day has changed since, let's say, even last year to help That's you be the best version of you? Really good question. And, uh, you know, one of the things, the ads that I did it's really doing like like some manifestation work as part of my morning routine. 
So it's always been, you know, for the last, you know, couple of years, I get up, I do a breathing technique. It's sort of a modified version of Joe Dispenza's supernatural breathing, where you kind of bring, squeeze the energy from the lower chakras into the crown chakra. And, uh, and then, I, uh, then I incorporate some of my yoga breaths, like Kundalini yoga breathing into that. So, so you know, I kind of, you know, follow different teachers, but spirit and, and my guides are my ultimate teachers. So I do that, I do my meditation, but then I really lock into um, just really being, you know, what I desire in my life. It's not like I want this to happen or I need this to happen. It's already happening in my mind. And I, I tell a lot of people how I cured myself of having lifelong severe, super severe chronic eczema to the degree that the chief dermatologist at NYU hospital told me I had the worst case of wow. eczema that he'd ever seen. You know, and he's the chief dermatologist. So it was bad. It's supposed to say it was bad. And, and I just got, you know, well, I had to stop being angry about the condition first. I, you know, that's victim mentality. So you know, instead of, you know, thinking about, you know, you know, God sucks and all, all, all the other crazy things that were going through my mind, you know, one morning I just say, you know, this isn't working. I've got to change the whole paradigm. And basically what I started to do is every day, you know, beside the affirmations and I was, always, you know, I was always experimenting with diet. That wasn't even really the problem. But every day for a while, I'd make the reality in my mind that my skin is perfect, that I have no autoimmunity, that I'm not smearing topical steroids, taking prednisone every day in my life. My skin was getting paper thin. So wow. I made that my reality every day. And it took three years. And I often tell people on my own live streams and interviews that one of probably one of my best qualities is that I'll never give up. Like three years is a lot of, of time, but five years, no steroids, no itching. And, and, you know, a lot of this, I also owe, owe to a practice called heart brain coherence that, that I know a lot of you have heard of. And, and when I started to do this, I didn't know who Joe Dispenza was other than, than a voice in the secret. That's all I knew about Joe Dispenza. So I didn't know any of this stuff. It's just like spirit telling me, this is what you got to do. You know, you got to create your reality because you have diseases of the mind, you know, and yeah, there's pathogens, there's genetics, obviously that plays a role, but diseases primarily of the mind and and it's the programming bring it's the sensitivity you know it's a lot of child abuse all the stuff went into it although i got eczema starting at eight, at 4 months of age you know, i think wow. after the first round of vaccines but we don't have to go there today but uh <laughs> and, and of course i don't know if one led to the other but but that said i mean i had it my whole life but so anyhow i don't know if i answered the question or if i went off on my own tangent but uh <laughs> so I was kind of curious about how your energy regimen has supported right, right. you this year versus last year. Um, and it kind of brings me to a question too, as you were talking. So you get to pick the ones you want to choose, but it, um, it led me to thinking like, wow, okay, you're right. Um, we're such emotional mental beings and it does wreak havoc on our health sometimes if mm. you know it's things that we cannot process or get out of our system so do you think that energy sensitive people are more prone to dealing with health issues you know maybe as a generalization yes but i feel like like every, we're all individuals with our own stories right. and, and and our own uh you set of parameters certainly being energy sensitive being empathic and all that stuff you you can make us more vulnerable to, to illness and, and things of that nature. You know, um, being very empathic and having skin issues. A, a lot of uh, people that are very empathic develop weight problems also. Now, genetically, I'm not going to gain weight. It's just not going to happen. Like in college, drinking beer and eating donuts every day, I, maybe I, I, I got a little bit of a gut, but <laughs> nothing more than that. that's not going to happen. But the skin stuff... You know, our skin's our barrier between our inner selves and, and the environment around us. And if we're super sensitive, that layer can get affected also. So I think a lot of things kind of went into that and it went into this particular, you know, process of disease that, that, that I had to go through. But also in my more enlightened state, I, I take disease as a teacher, not, not, not a negative thing. 
but something to teach me about myself, about my own programming, my own conditioning, maybe in the past lives, because there's that component also. So I think it, it, it's all relative in terms of, uh, in terms of our, our overall health. But uh, I always think of Joe Dispenza's book, yeah, You Are the Placebo, and the example of the woman with breast cancer. And I've heard this in other places also. I mean, not the, the I'm sorry, the woman with multiple personality disorders, that one of her personalities developed breast cancer. He outlines this, wow. I think it's You Are the Placebo, one of his books. He does. And when she was in that personality, there was a physical tumor. When he, she, she was not in that personality, no tumor. How does that happen? And how can I do like a distance healing to somebody I don't even know in France and have their tumor like shrink like, like to half the size in 48 hours? It's all wow. energy and frequency. I'm I'm not like, like the grand wazoo or anything. I'm just another energy healer, somebody that, that's tuned into great spirit and divine energy. And I can tune into people's frequencies. I know you can do the same thing. So I know you understand what I'm saying. And if they're ready to heal, because we're only able to really you know, enhance their energy fields and enhance their own innate healing ability. So if they're ready, miracles can happen. You know, and what, what's the old expression? When two or more are, are gathered in my name, I'll be there with them also, basically. So the power of prayer, the power of intention, it's all energy, it's all frequency. We can modify the weather with our mind. We can move things with our mind. And, you know, we can heal cancer. We can heal MS. This is like sort of the new paradigm of medicine. And, you know, again, a lot of it starts with cultivating the frequencies of the heart. And uh, understanding that our hearts are intelligent also. Our hearts are able to think, but our hearts are stronger than the brain. And our hearts think more on an, an intuitive and, and a spiritual level. But uh, there are brain cells in our heart, nowhere else in the body. And this is all validated by science. So the practice of heart-brain coherence is either scientifically proven or, 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 or validated through science and maybe not yet proven yet by the rigors of science. Right. So it's really, it's really fascinating. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard of the, the tumor um, study, but I've heard of a study with, um, I, I forget if it was a male or female, but it was an individual with multiple personalities and, they had a severe peanut allergy with one of their personalities mm. and it was all tested and validated by science. And um, when you're getting into um, talking about the power of the mind and the heart, so there's a lot of research with like heart math I'm a little familiar with for mm -hmm. sure and the electromagnetic field of the hearts. But you're talking about um, there's brain cells too within the heart. So can, can you talk about kind of what you've learned with the, the resonance between uh, the brain and the heart as well? Yeah, well... Yeah, I'm, I I don't remember the name of these cells, um, but there's a particular type of, cell, of cells that exist in the brain and the heart. And what I found, and I, I kind of came across heart-brain coherence. I mean, I've been doing a lot of like heart work, you know, through yoga practice and other things. I mean, that's just one way to expand the frequencies of the heart. But what I like about it is there's some scientific research behind it. It's basically taking ancient wisdom and knowledge, you know, like the the old, um, all the old masters from Jesus to, to um, Lao Tzu, you know, to, to the Buddha, you know, take your pick, you know, compassion, live with compassion. You know, that that's the secret to anti-aging. That's the secret to being happy, to being fulfilled. So all, all this takes into account, but uh, what I found when I started to do the practice, and this is really, really what sold me on it, is that I, I did it, I really, yeah, and, and all it is, so all the practice is, it's really simple, like anything else in spirituality, is you get relaxed, you get present, and that's the key, always get present, like if, you, if you're doing mediumship readings, you get present also, right, you, right, you stop that, the, the monkey mind, and when you stop the mind, then you expand the awareness. So the first step is to get present and aware. And then the next step is to just hold magnified gratitude, appreciation, uh, compassion, caring, like holding those. This is uh, what, what Greg Braden says also, holding these 
these four emotions and I did it. And what happened is I started to feel like, like, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, I think this is what Joe Dispenza, when he talks about having heavy orgasm of the brain, I think that that's <laughs> what happened to me because I got, got, got a head rush. Like all, when, when my brain and my heart started to lock in, I felt like I was shooting out of my body. I, I did an astral travel, but I got this intense rush to the point of where my body tensed up. And then I started to see vivid colors and images. It's like a DMT release. And this is like one of the first times I did it. And I was like, oh my God, th this is, this is like, like the golden key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, this is it. Yeah. This is what they're talking about. Why the heart's so important. Why the heart's the portal to the soul. You know, why if you can cultivate the frequencies of the heart and you, and you can, make that's you know hearts are coherent when they feel compassion gratitude and love that's what hearts do that's what they want to do we live in a society of, of dread and fear and programming it gets our heart incoherent so they found the heart and the brain are connected they're really two parts of the same organ but the heart's stronger so the approach is if you can make your heart coherent then the brain comes back into coherency and this is your know, vibrational coherency it's not saying you know, that, you know, eliminating heart arrhythmias or, or, or the physical like coherence. In fact, our hearts are supposed to be slightly arrhythmic. You know, our hearts are not supposed to be exactly symmetrical, which is another interesting thing. Yeah. But so when the heart becomes vibrationally coherent, so does the brain. And when the brain and the heart sink and they become coherent, guess what? You become coherent with spirit also. So it, it was a real revelation in, in my mediumship work, especially because I felt a little bit stuck uh, uh, on a similar level for a couple of years. And then when I started to do that, more more opened up, more abilities opened up in, in that way. And, and then I started to heal uh, on another level. And I tell people, you know, I'm still one of the happiest people that I know. And, you know, I live by myself, you know, I, I don't go out a whole lot and, and, you know, I do a lot on YouTube, of course, and, 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 and connect with people that way. But, uh, um, but, you know, I, I don't have those things that people associate happiness with and happiness is a choice. But when I tell people that it can be frustrating to some people that, that are not happy because sometimes the choice is subconscious also. Sometimes to the programming, we're, we're just kind of um, geared to uh, to just be unhappy or, or to see the negatives or stuff like that. So we have to make that choice. We have to make that conscious choice. And then we have to work through a lot of those shadow aspects and to integrate those shadows in, in order to be whole and complete again. And really to find that, that happiness is basically our, our, our natural state. The more happy, the more enjoy, the more we feel love, the closer we are to spirit or God. You know, there's a reason that children that haven't been programmed want to run, laugh, play, and sing rather than yeah. talk about, about their injuries or talk about how miserable their parents are and all that stuff, because they're not so separated from spirit. They're not programmed to sever that tie with our creator. And that's where all the problems start. And when you ask a, a toddler where they are, nine out of 10 times, they're going to go, I'm here. They're, they're going to point to their heart. They're not going to point to their heads because they know their essence of their spirit resides in the heart center. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's this dissonance that happens yeah. through life. Um, you know, we shut down certain parts of ourselves and then we we have to refine and reclaim um, parts of ourselves that, we instinctively, like sometimes we don't even know we're turning off parts of our energy, you know, we just go, that was a bad experience or um, I'm just surviving and I guess I won't do that again. But when we don't do a certain thing again, we sometimes cut off a piece of ourselves without even realizing it, not always, but in certain situations. And so I think it's very powerful that you talk about that you know, we're meant to be joyful. We're, we're, we're very emotional beings. Like we're in very emotionally, um, receptive bodies. Like the technology of the human body is to be highly emotional. I, I, you know, so when you ignite the heart, like what you're able to do and experience is amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely, yeah. And we are very emotional beings. You know, emotion, that's the letter E in the word motion. So that's energy and motion. So, you know, our emotions is a great gauge of energy, but we have to be present and clear. Otherwise, the emotions more come from the programming and conditioning. So a lot of us are programmed to be in negative emotions. Well, when I say negative, I'll reframe that and say survival-based emotions. Because anger, fear, if you're being chased by a tiger, these are really good things. So it's energy and motion, but it triggers hormones in the body. And people get addicted to those hormones the same way they get addicted to heroin and drugs. And, you know, for people that, that can't understand why this person's such a drama queen, why this person just recycles the same things over and over again, they don't realize they're addicted to those chemicals in the body but the source of emotions is energetic it's not physical but that's how as physical beings we experience the energies through the the hormones in the body basically important in our health important in our outlook important in everything because like you said we're emotionally based beings and it's through these feelings that that we grow that we experience the world around us because you know we're not physical beings. We're 99.999% empty space according to atomic structure. So there's nothing solid about us. Everything that, that we see is not real. It, everything's energy and it's through our human operating system that it appears to have form, it appears to have color and so forth and so on. But it's all different bandwidths of energy and most of it is imperceivable to the human systems also until we start to expand beyond or and start to see through the portal of the heart, which connects to the brain, which connects to the crown chakra, which connects to the upper transpersonal chakras as well, where, where we, we connect with divine source. So um, all good stuff, yeah. <laughs> so you talked about when you activated um, your heart portal, your heart center, um, that opened up you beyond what was just personal, right? Beyond um, just your own energy, you were starting to see color, you were starting to have more um, ease within your mediumship. Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, you know, it's a combination of being more present, but mediumship is, is, is a compassion-based practice, as we know. So mediumship is of the heart, in, in my estimation, uh, Yeah, because we're healers. You know, we're, we're here to basically... Uh, validate the continuity of life to be able to prove that that there is no death there's just different levels of life and different levels of existence so through activating the heart it really helps activate the brain which helps activate the spirit and and it's you know like attracts light so when we become who we are a spirit we're, we're we're more attractive to spirit and that includes people that have crossed over because they're still living. They're just not living in human bodies anymore. They're, they're living a spirit. So I think, you know, a big part of that also is just it makes me more compassionate. And the more compassionate that I can be, you know, let's face it, mediumship's not easy work. We have difficult clients. Sometimes we have bad days where, we're, you know, sometimes we get people where it seems like it's pulling teeth to, to, to get any kind of you know, feedback or whatever. It's easy to get frustrated, but the more in your heart you are, the more you can feel like, like um, you know, it's, it's okay because it's just their response. It's just their reaction. And I found this has happened more than once. You might be able to relate. Like I could have like the most difficult climb. It's like, I'm getting this, I'm getting this name, I'm getting this condition, blank stares. Um, <laughs> you understand uh, maybe, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing. All right, I'm getting this, you understand, maybe or whatever. But then you get some gem, you know, something. And then the person breaks down and they start crying. And then all of a sudden the reading gets easier. And uh, because they, they, they because nobody wants to cry in public you know they're holding on to this grief and whatever and as soon as you can break that then it opens up now in a perfect world us as mediums the client has nothing to do with it our job is to connect directly with spirit i'm sorry though i <laughs> i feel the energy of the person also the spirits <laughs> come with the person if they're close it makes my job a lot harder i had a debate with somebody one of the the british mediums that's um and they're right, you know, ideally, 
they have nothing to do with it. This is a, a connection between the spheres. It has nothing to do with the client, but you know, maybe that's part of my growth. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's opening very the heart helped help me to, to to release some of those barriers. And you know, just because it, it's a it's a it's a process of love. And when they come to us, it's the vibration of the love. So the more in my love that I can be, the more I feel their energies, and the more they're able to transmit the information. And and the more open that I can be. So again, the heart, when the heart is in compassion, the brain opens up also. And so yeah, the more I, I can be in my compassion and in, in my heart, the more my brain can access and the more I, I can get the information, you know, through, you know, could I do mostly mental mediumship? You know, I'm not a, a spirit artist or I've been. I, I mean, I do some trance work also, but that's more through um, the Ascended Masters, a group I call the Master Teachers. But I primarily do mental mediumship or psychic mediumship. So my mind's got to be engaged. So if I engage my heart, my mind is more open to, and, and I'm more open to spirit. So I, I think I, that made sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 it does. And I think like it's, I believe with all the research out there with what the heart does for the body when it is, um, you know, uh, balanced and it works with the rest of the body and the mind, et cetera. I think it just shows the evolution of human potential because a lot of us are so mental based and we think, okay, more mental energy means a sharper individual. Well, actually there's, all these other mechanisms to what makes our brain so sharp. And so, you, you know, we're describing it through, through mediumship kind of with, within that angle of how our brain works better, just, just in that angle of life. But um, I agree with you. Um, you know, when you're, you have a client or a person in front of you, a part of us, you know, naturally is empathetic because we have energy before us and we're aware of their energy. I do think within mediumship, it's easier to let go of that person because we have to pay more attention to spirit. But if you are doing like a coaching session, Adam, or a psychic reading, I would imagine that your um, understanding of where their heart as uh, their heart is at as you're giving them a reading is quite like, oh, they're they're in their mind. Oh my gosh, they're in their mind. Yeah, I can tell you, like being very highly empathic, very highly sensitive. I mean, you know, when they talk about empaths, you know, the, the, I wrote the book on that. I think that's both my greatest asset and my greatest challenge in doing psychic work. Because, you know, having you know, the ability to get information through the emotions and feelings is great. But it, it can really like throw me off when I'm feeling people's <laughs> energy so much. And yeah, that happens in mediumship too, but not to such a degree. So in a way, it's almost like I've got to get into a mindset and almost pretend I don't care about this person, which is <laughs> which I do, but but it's almost like no, I have to get too. into that mindset to really be able to access the information. And it's like like you know, it becomes a great challenge for me because I feel their energy so much. And if I have to say something that they're not going to like or approve of, I feel that. And and I've it's taken me a right. good number of years to really get into the habit of just not letting that stop me. And yeah. sometimes I have to remember, you know, the worst that's going to happen is they won't like the reading. I'll refund their money. It's not that big of a deal. So so you know that that's really what what I have to just kind of keep in mind and just, you know, say what I get. And, and, uh, but you know, when you're feeling their energy and you're feeling their thoughts, it, it, it gets really hard and it gets in the way sometimes. So I agree. Uh, I know yeah. that's a, that's a very real thing because when you're really connected to somebody, you know what they like and they don't like, you know, yeah. if you're going to say something that it's going to trigger them and then you have to, it's like, personally not making a judgment call, but at the same time being aware enough of their energy of how to talk to them, you know, because you just, you, you feel, or the heart receives what the person needs to hear. So it's, it's a very, it's a very gentle consideration. And I love that you said, you know, worst case scenario, if I tell them what just is truthful and they don't like it, that 
I just offer them a refund. Like that's a very brave approach. And that like enacts the heart, that bravery. I love it. I love it. Um, my approach usually is like, this is going to sound awkward or, you know, like I'm used to being awkward during readings. Cause I'm, I'm just aware. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going to acknowledge your nervousness around this, 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 uh, subject. And yeah. I'm okay. I'm vulnerable enough to, to look for a moment. Like, um, I'm nervous to talk about it because I know how you, nervous you are to talk about it, but I love how brave you are in that, Adam. I really do. It also helps to purge, you know, all poverty consciousness or lack consciousness, you know, just being willing to just give them their money back, whatever. So that's, there's another side of that too. Um, <laughs> you just got to take it as um, it comes. Um, and I do think, you know, you highlighted that, when there's a special piece of evidence for the person, you might not even expect it. They, whether they cry or all of a sudden they go, wait, yeah, I can relate to that. It's like the rest of the stuff that they dismissed sometimes comes together. Even that. Yeah. Um, it's breaking a barrier. It's hard to explain, but only have to break that barrier. I mean, sometimes it's just, they're skeptical because unfortunately a lot, a lot of people utilize the, um, intangibility of psychic readings to scam people and everything so people have that on their mind also so there's all these like barriers to break through and i just ask you yeah, just give me something really specific in the beginning to get cut through all that so we can <laughs> do the reading and get through it all and then we're, everybody's happy and uh <laughs> is it bad that i'm expecting to be uncomfortable <laughs> like you know what i mean like i'll just be like i don't know how this is gonna go like but i'm expecting for at least a couple things <laughs> to be like not not understood that we're gonna blast through <laughs> You know, maybe it's just your own wisdom to experience just knowing you're just sensing how how it's gonna how it's gonna be for them yeah, there's a, it's just, it's, it's a funny, funny thing. So within your mediumship too, when you really enact your heart, what do you think are the biggest changes, um, that come into play with how you start to sense and work? Um, you know, cause I, I, I always start by expanding the heart and, you know, and I feel like one thing is I, I just get more comfortable doing that. So all these challenges I, I was talking about earlier, if I can really be in the frequency of the heart, that, that really nullifies a lot of the stuff. And, uh, you know, so, um, so, so I think it's that, and, uh, in one of the techniques that, that, that I use and that, that I teach is my favorite linking technique actually is expanding the heart, starting to feel with my heart, like say my aura, my, my own energy field then expanding my heart further. A lot of teachers use this. At some, one point I thought this was original until I saw Joe Dispenza has a meditation like this and Sharon Klingway, one of my teachers teaches this and this person teaches this, so it's not original, but, but, um, <laughs> but it, it, you know, our, our heart is an amazing sensing tool. Like our hearts do so much. Um, that, you know, we can sense with our heart, we can feel with our hearts, we can think with our hearts and all this. So. It's a good meditation to do, you know, for everybody, like every day, just feel your heart expanding, feel your body with your heart. That's a good way to self-diagnose, you know, if you have blockages, feel your aura with your heart. See if you can find the, the overactive points in your aura. You started the show by talking about the different layers of the aura. So see if you can feel with your heart, your different auric layers, and maybe feel the furniture, feel the walls. And then uh, you can expand that to feel your village, your town, the earth, the, the, the solar system, the universe. You can do that. But when I expand my heart, it's like I'm looking for spirit. So I'm setting the intention. Where do I feel? Oh, I feel energy over here. Oh, there's a female here. Yeah, I don't know if this is one of yours, but there, there's a lady with me right before I came in that, that liked some kind of strawberry scented perfume. I was like, <laughs> kind of like that in my mind. <laughs> Baby, she came through older, I want to say. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's one of yours. I mean, I'm in somebody's house. It could be the person's mother, also. But uh. it could be. No, I'm. I'm. Yeah. Um, because she came in older. I have. I. I know some younger uh, females around me that would have like sense like that, but they were younger. But uh, I love that. No, for me. Yeah. Yeah. This was 
I feel like there's a name like Claire or Clara connected to that or the CL name. Like I said, this may not be yours. I mean, it could be one of your listeners too, for all I know. This stuff is real, everyone. I mean, like you'll all of a sudden get hit with an impression when your heart yeah. is open. You're like, where is that? You know, there's a, a strawberry perfume or a cigarette smoke and you will, you will feel them. You'll feel them. A lot of people get psychic smells, even people that don't consider themselves mediums. I tell people to pay attention to that. Yeah, you know, that, that's, you know, you smell cigarette smoke and you don't smoke. There's a smoker that's trying to say hi to you, basically. So, you know, that's a, an energy signature. So, um, so where was I before I went off on that tangent? You're talking about opening the heart, <laughs> connecting to spirit. All, all right. And then, then uh, but uh, that's basically, that. that's a powerful technique. And you, you can use that. And, you know, energy flows where attention goes. That's an old Wayne Dyer expression. And... Uh, I can set the intention to connect to the other side, or I can connect, set an intention to connect to the angels or ascended masters or, or, or the star beings, you know, the extraterrestrial guides. It's the same technique that I'll use. It's a different intention. And, and that's what happens when I, what I intend is, is, is what happens. So we, yeah, with our thoughts and intention, we can move mountains in the spirit world energetically. The physical world is very dense, so it takes more time, but we can move mountains in the physical world also. We can change our lives. We can heal from incurable disease. I've done it. Yo, know, eczema is only one of several. I have, I have a couple more on the hit list. The, 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 you know, I, I, I'm kind of going through life by, by starting out very sickly and getting healthier as I get older. You know, at 64, I'm healthier than I've ever been. That's and great. that's part of the benefits of heart brain coherence. It's like it helps to reverse or at least delay the aging process. And they've done scientific studies that show one of the two principal causes of, of aging is a tele, telomere de degeneration through cellular divide. Doing this practice increases telomerase, the enzyme in the body that helps to lubricate the telomeres. And according to science, 120 is the absolute max, you know, that the, 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 the chromosomes will be tossed once you reach 120. So if you escape cancer and all kinds of disease, you have to live to 120, that's it. But people have lived longer than that. And people have been interviewed that have lived longer than that. And invariably, they'll say things like, I live my life simply. I live with compassion. I live from the heart. And I've had so many people, and you know, whether they're just trying to make me feel good about getting older or what, I don't know. But I've had so many people say, you know, each day, each month you look younger, Adam. It's like each day, you know, each year you look younger. And um, I think there's some truth of that. I mean, if I scrutinize, I can see more sagging skin. I can see the vis I can see the visible sign of aging. I can absolutely see that. But I, you know, recently I, wa I watched a video I did a year ago and I'm like, I looked older then than I do now. So that's one of the benefits, you know, not getting sick, healing from disease. A lot of this is, has been proven by science, being, being more, more intuitive. All the stuff has been proven and, and there's other things, you know, there, there's other facets to it. I mean, you know, I have a, you know, a mental checklist of things that, that I go over when, when I'm teaching heart brain coherence. And uh, I'm actually creating an online course that I'm calling the, the Heart Magnification System and using heart brain coherence and combining that with some of my breathing and, and yoga techniques. And I tell people, get very present. That's the first thing. If you want to do heart brain coherence, you know, at first you may want to count your blessing. You know, what are you grateful for? Stuff like that. But what I want people to do is learn how to get so present in the moment that they start to lose their sense of self. And, and then of course they gain their sense of who their true self is. Right. Um, and then just cultivate being present just for the present moment. And if you can do that, that's when the magic happens. Like, like everything's perfect now and really feel that with your heart and really feel gratitude overlays for, with compassion. That's when it happens. It's not subtle. Like in my case, it's a huge head rush. You know, I, I used to smoke a lot of weed when I was younger and, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> and one of the things, you know, when you smoke the good stuff, anyway, when you stand up, it's like you get this head rush. <laughs> it's like, well, that's what it's like. It's, I think it's a DMT release that happens. 
And right oh, now, yeah. my biggest challenge is keeping my body relaxed when that's happening because the body wants to tense up because the human survival instinct doesn't like this. It's like, this is a change. You're killing us. We're going to stop you, basically, is kind of what happens. So my body tenses. I'm really, and, and doing cold therapy really helps with that. Like, like, Right now, um, if I get out in the morning, my, my creek is about 45 degrees. So if I can get up in the morning and go in the creek and stay there at least 30 seconds, I try to stay in a minute and a half. And instead of my body tensing, Wim Hof teaches this, you know, instead of my body tensing, you just relax, you know, feel the cold invading my body, relax with it. So I'm really trying to train my body to relax. And I think once I master that, my whole practice is going to just go into a whole nother level, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Learning about what we can do with our bodies and brain and our heart. Yeah. And because we do have a lot of resistance, you know, understandable. Like we, we, we've put up boundaries instinctually. Mm -hmm. We've put up uh, barriers we've said no that's not good within our consciousness and our energy and um i do think like there's a terrific amount of vulnerability within mediumship and so how we learn to work with energy um with our own understanding greatly amplifies then how we're able to be receptive to the spirit world because there's so much that they're giving us i really believe i i, I truly believe they're giving us like 500 or a thousand pieces of information a second and we're able to pick up like three exactly if we're i'm not telling you too freaking fast for us <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh-huh it feels like uh when you're really connected it feels like your brain's just boop, 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 boop. but it, it feels so slow when you're actually when you have the resonance when you have the coherence you know when you have the blending feels yeah, uh, not, maybe not slow blending but of heart and brain yeah that's really the goal and then they become like a super organ and then it's scientifically proven to enhance your intuition that's one of the you know the benefits that, they, that they've discovered uh, you know, help to retard and even reverse the aging process to some degree to heal from things. You have supernatural healing. You have know, people have done this practice, they've healed things like MS. And, and you know, Joe Dispenza talks about this all the time. Uh, and it enhances the immune system. One of the things they found, if you do this practice, and of course, there's many ways of working and cultivating the frequency of the heart. Heart brain coherence is one of many ways you can do this. I think it's, I, to me, it's really the most powerful and succinct that I know about. But then I use some yoga breathing also. But, uh, but it's been scientifically shown that, uh, that doing this practice 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes at a time, three times a day, that's what Heart Math recommends, that, that it's shown to increase the immunoglobulin A. You know, that's basically, I think, where the T cells are. It's the gamma, or the gamma globulin A, the immunoglobulin to factor 50%. Wow. I remember catching an interview that Joe uh, did before COVID. I don't know what his take uh, was on the COVID vaccine. My guess it's probably the same as it was on the other vaccine. Because somebody asked, so Joe, do you do the flu shot? He's like, flu shot, flu shot. What do I need a flu shot for? I do heart brain coherence. I don't need a flu shot. <laughs> He's very emphatic about that and very animated about it also. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, if your immune system um, is activated with strengthening um, itself, it's just a, a completely game changer for how you feel uh, in the world around you. I, I just, how can I put it? I know when I'm more heart centered, I feel a rush of energy. I feel yeah, so much more energy, vital. Yeah. I feel when I, you know, do healings or readings, like I'll just look and I'm like, oh, I'm like, my skin is glowing, you know, like I feel more calm. I feel more centered, like, and I even just heal from things faster. Yeah. You know, yeah. the healer gets the healing too. Absolutely. And that has to be activated with what you're talking about. Yeah. So, you know, working the heart enhances all of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, you know, great practice and uh, trying to think if you have know, any more examples that come to mind or, I mean, but that, you know, that's certainly a huge benefit. You know, a good example is when, when I got COVID and I knew, you know, I knew that I had COVID. There's no doubt. I mean, I got the test to, to, to double check. So 
So I got COVID and, you know, I, 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 the fever was so bad. I couldn't, couldn't get warm. I even took a hot bath, which is such a no, no, when you have a high fever, but I took a hot bath just to get comfortable for about 15 minutes, covered the blanket. And this whole time that I was doing this, it's like, you know, I, I was in my heart and I was in my power and I was applying my healing. And I knew if I could just sweat, I couldn't sweat with 103 fever, you know, plus I could not sweat. It, it's oh. the COVID just, just the weirdest thing. Uh, it's to me, it's not even a virus, it's something else, you know, having experienced it. Um, but um, I broke that fever within 18 hours. Um, you know, people have usually had, had the symptoms for a day. You know, the, the next day I just had the trace symptoms that lasted about three weeks. The trace symptoms, I must admit, but I, you know, by applying my practice, I was able to break that fever. You know, before the second day, you know, that, that morning it started to sweat. The fever was gone, and uh, and and I only missed an afternoon of work. I even did a live stream that night. It was all over wow. uh, New Year's Eve, so I did my whole 2022 live stream forecast. You know, second day of COVID, and not not just you know, and, and a pretty significant case of COVID, I might add. Also, let's say. So anyway, that's another example. So how how you can apply it? You know, you can apply it and enhance your immune system and. Uh, and to help to, you know, I mean, viruses need to run their course or whatever COVID is. Um, it's like a virus. I, I don't know. But whatever whatever it is. Um, but you, you can enhance and accelerate their process. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when you know your body that well and you understand um, how to open up energy and clear energy, um, I can only imagine, right, what you're able to accelerate with the timeline of how things entered and stayed within your body and left your body. Um, I want to take a question really quick here. Sure. So, um, so Angela is talking about, she also, first of all, she says, Adam is an incredible energy healer and Thank you, uh, she sing, absolutely. She sings your praises. She says you're fantastic. Um, and she talks about, I'm always nervous for readings because I know spirit will call me out uh, can't BS God. So what is your advice to people um, who, let's say, are open, but they come in incredibly nervous and they're in their head? I don't know. It's just, yeah, I, I think that the best thing is acceptance. You know, like like when I got onto YouTube, that's a whole other story because Spirit kind of called me out and said, I need to get on YouTube. And I, I danced back and you see me on camera. I'm pretty good on camera now, right? Even better than the first interview that we did. So I'm kind of along, but, but, you know, I did a lot of, you know, subconscious reprogramming. So um, why did I say this? Let me get back to the, the, you know, the context <laughs> of the question. Oh, 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 oh okay. I, it came back to me. It's just kind of like I had to accept be, being embarrassed on a weekly basis. That, that, that kind of came with YouTube and, and doing this work. It's like, like, I hate being embarrassed. I hate that. And I had to just accept it. And I think, the best thing for people is just accept the fact that, that you may get, you know, called out or whatever. It's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. They come to you with compassion. They're, they're not trying to hurt you. And they're not trying to embarrass you. They're trying to help you. So maybe just keep that in mind. You know, I, I think that, that that'll help. I th Yeah, because it, it is kind of like that. I, I feel when someone comes in for a reading, it's like all eyes are on them. Just like if you're yeah. on like YouTube or a show, all eyes are on you and you have to have a certain uh, amount of acceptance <laughs> when you're walking in. Yeah. It feels, feels a lot sometimes um, for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you too about, so, cause we're really focusing on the power of the heart in this episode and with the power of your heart when you enacted it and how you're, you know, balancing and, and finding such harmony, what were one of the like behaviors or thoughts that you learned you had to let go of to reach even further harmony? Yeah, yeah, that that's not a hard one to answer. Yeah, that's just basically like, like it's, I probably got this from my dad, although you know, probably from before, but it's just like, like frustration. Like I tend to be a very easily frustrated person. 
And when they say, you know, something goes wrong, it's like, ah, damn it, it's like, like, you know, the steam rises from my head, you know, and I, I, I wouldn't say it's not so much anger management, just like frustration with myself, with people. And working with the heart makes us much more compassionate, much more forgiving. Sometimes you talk about we have to forgive others. I mean, yeah, but we have to forgive ourselves first and foremost. And that's what people have a hard time. We're, we're indoctrinated in this guilt, shame mentality. You know, look what goes on out there. It's like, you know, we're, we're shamed in, in, the, in the behavior modification and people do that to us all the time. Now, according to Dr. David Hawkins and many others, Guilt and shame is even lower on the emotional frequency scale than anger is, than fear is, yeah. and all those yeah. emotions. So, um, you know, I, I think the main thing is, is you know, self-acceptance. It's like, all right, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm human. You know, I have issues. I don't have to be perfect. And I think one of the things is, you know, as I was getting more into public work, I had this illusion it's you know, just my ego you know it's not not in reality that i had to be perfect i had to impress people you know and you know people i think at lilydale especially in the early days will talk about me and say oh yeah that guy is looking for attention <laughs> blah 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 this and the other thing um although he, you know from the get-go my mediumship was really good so you know so the, the, you know he's blessed with that but um um but I think, you know, we have to kind of let go, you know, to, you know and, and understand that, that it doesn't matter how we appear to others. It's just, you know, again, that, that's kind of giving away our power to other people if we care what others think about us. I mean, certainly that's not to say to be an a-hole to everybody, you know, you know to have your, your set of, you know, of standards, like, you know, like, you know, the old saying from the Bible, like treat others, do unto others as you want done unto yourself. I think if you you do that and then you don't accept, you know, you have, you have self-criticism. I think that that's re really a, a big part of it also. Making peace, you know, with ourselves yeah. in more and yeah, more ways. Perfect. We'll make mistakes. Yeah. No, we, we certainly aren't. And um, I think like when we can just breathe and go, oh, I, I can let that thought or that behavior go because I don't feel like that's like the new me, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't feel like that's the new me, or I don't feel like I need that part of me anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, like any other like shadow integration where we can release what we don't embrace first. And I think that that's where a lot of people kind of get a little bit confused because they're trying to, you know, this is not bad, you know, this behavior is not bad, I, I, I'm going to stop it and get rid of it. I think you have to embrace it first and uh, just understand we're all programmed. You know, the, as soon as we pop out of the womb, the programming begins. It severs our tie with spirit, which is our, you know, our wellspring of, of, of energy and, and, and joy and, and, and being. So we get cut off from that from the beginning. And then we were kind of like in the space that, that we lose, you know, connection with who we truly are. And then, you know, and then we get, get programmed or whatever. So, um, in think, brief, uh, all, I want to say, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so not to be guilty or shameful about that, you know, if we have issues or we have tendencies, but so shadow work is an integration, you know, we want to integrate those shadows because they're part of who we are. And then, then when we integrate and we embrace it, then, then we can release that, that those behaviors, those undesirable behaviors and patterns and cycles that we go through. Yeah, that don't serve us any good. With uh, with people that you've guided within their mediumship journey, what is something frequently that you find that people have to reconnect and re-embrace within their own energy? Well, again, I, I think part of it is that they, they have to be okay with being wrong, basically. Yeah. Yes. The first step. And then I'll tell people, all right, so right now we're in a very supportive circle. You know, it's easy to get information when you're out there in the world. You know, you're not in such a supportive environment. There's a lot of opposition, you know. So I, I tell people, you know, lose the fear of being wrong. You know, lose that, that, that fear of judgment, of scrutiny. Because I think, you know, we fear that a lot. I had a, you know, well-meaning but very critical father. They wanted me to be the best that I can be, but I wound up hating, you know, criticism, hating, you know, scrutiny, 
all that kind of stuff. And then I had to, you know, that was a shadow aspect that I had to embrace and then, then learn to release that. So, um, so I think, you know, one of the things that I'll tell the medium is that and learn to be spontaneous, like, because we, we want to be right, because we care about what other people think, instead of getting pure information, we go into the brain, we go in, into the um, conscious mind, because that's how we're trained to, to be. And then we start to draw from the personal mind rather than purely from spirit. So I'll, do, so I'll do like these quick things like who's with you now? What angel's with you now? And I expect the person to answer me within a half second. And if they don't, I'm like, you're thinking, don't think. You get that. And, you know, I, I learned this, you know, I started spirituality through martial arts training. And my, my teacher, you know, would be like, you know, it was um, Filipino martial arts, but it was very aligned with Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do and, and his philosophies and teachings. And the thing is, you can't think, you know, if you think in battle, you're dead, basically. You oh, have yeah. to be in the moment. And spiritual warriorship is about not going into those fe into that fear, because fear can save your life. Fear's not a bad thing, but the problem is you condense into, the, into what's right around your body and you lose the connection to spirit. So you want to be able to cultivate those anger and fear emotions, the, the adrenaline and all that stuff, but, but, but while staying open to spear, while staying open with source. So the idea is you learn to flow, you know, mediumship's a flow, it's a dance. Everything's a cosmic dance. And in warriorship, in, in fighting, it's a dance. You know, it, it's like flowing with, with your opponent, basically. When you think you cut that flow off and then, and then you react too late, basically. Same thing in mediumship. If I'm not thinking, then the information can come. As soon as I start thinking, I'm putting up a big wall, basically. So this is what I tr really, because people come in to, to my classes, they're already mediums. They may or may not know, but they're already mediums. They just need need to learn now how to get out of their own way so that they they, they can utilize those gifts and talents for themselves and for others. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that you put in the angle of, you know, being a warrior, you know, you can't, you can't think within battle, you have to be in flow. That's, that's amazing. I think a lot of people can wrap their heads around that if they haven't yeah. experienced being a medium or, or, or being um, very sensitive to energy, because I think a lot of people who haven't had certain experiences, they're like, well, how is that possible? And I think that is just such a profound way to explain it from that angle. I really like that. I give you kudos. You. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, Adam too, I want to ask what you are teaching um, and working on recently so people can find you and also what your website so people can um, reach out if they want to join what you're offering. Okay, so right now I, I, I don't have any formal classes set. I'm for, over the summer. I usually do some series. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet, but a lot of what I'm teaching is is on heart brain coherent or what what I call heart the heart magnification system that I'm developing and preparing online courses for that. Now I, I've taught mediumship courses. I've taught psychic development. I've taught channeling courses. Um, how to heal yourself and all that stuff. Now, my website is adambetweentheworlds.com and I'm doing a lot of my tutorials on YouTube. It's called The Medium Channel. It's my YouTube channel. I also have an inner core community on Patreon. That's called Spirit Mind Family on Patreon. And we have a topic every month. This past month was Crown Chakra Month. Next month is, what is my next month? Oh, it, it's uh, Extraterrestrial Awareness Month. And I'm really wow. into the star seeds and the extraterrestrials also. And then they communicate with me. I communicate with them. And then the next month's going to be the transpersonal chakra. So that's the um, soul star chakra, the earth star chakra, the spirit star chakra, universal star chakra, galactic gateway chakra. All those not, that all have Sanskrit names, you know, people think, oh, that's a bunch of new age stuff. It's like, well, they have Sanskrit names. So the ancient mystics knew about these also. Wow. Um, Love it. So, 
So I do a lot of the inner work, but I, I don't have any classes set right now at this time. Um, well, I, I sounds like people that. can find you on Patreon because you're weekly teaching. There's, there's yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I do session. a lot of teaching on Patreon. We do live videos where people can ask questions. It's uncensored. We can really talk about the nitty gritty of what's going on in the world, the control systems and, and all this stuff like, like, how we're, we're, we're evolving as a collective is we're learning how to um, discern, you know, what's being, you know, offered to us through the powers that be versus what we know intrinsically from spirit. And as we start to really connect more with spirit, then we're said to have an awakening and, and, and that's happening on, on a collective level. So a lot of my teaching really geared in that direction to help people with their awakening processes. I mean, my first one was spontaneous in 1979. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I was feeling earthquakes at the base of my spine. I didn't know what Kundalini was. I was just experiencing this stuff, thinking that there's freaking earthquakes going on in upstate New York. And my friend would be like, uh, what, what are you smoking? Uh, Cause whatever that is, we want that. Whatever you're smoking, we want that. We want to feel earthquakes too. It's like, then I then I read Gopi Krishna's book about Kundalini awakening. I was like, oh my god, this is what I'm tapping into. And anyway, Kundalini so. awakenings on various levels are a fascinating discussion. You know, well, that uh, could be a whole we, other topic. You know, it oh, can yeah. be very debilitating, also. And, Yes, actually, yes, that was, good and bad feelings. That's more of a stirring. I actually had more of a full Kundalini awakening in 2014, and I had to stop my practice for a full year. You know, I, I had, you know, talking about weed, I quit smoking weed for years and years. I went back to it because I could not sleep more than an hour or two. I could not eat. Wow. I had to force food. So I, I reluctantly went back to cannabis and then I could sleep a few hours and I could get, I could eat a meal basically. And then slowly I could start to assimilate this new energy and then get back to you know, my, my normal ways again you know, without having those, those side effects. So uh, anyway, no, no. Yeah. It can mess with sleep. A message with energy yeah. levels. It can make, uh, like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Technology. I was breaking things. Which isn't cool, also. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like uh, short circuit. New computer. No, no, no. Short circuit uh, devices. Yep that that sounds about right. That's in the yeah, vein. You know, I knew you, you. You got. I, I'm, I'm sure at least half of your listeners get that. Also, so, oh yeah, I know what, what what he's talking about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I, the, uh, again, it's just like what a fascinating discussion. Uh, you know, I would love to to talk to you further about that in the future because, you know, you have stories. I have stories. I'd love to hear your stories about Kundalini for sure. But I don't think I, I don't think people talk about it enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I think people's experiences are very like humbling within them because I mm -hmm. think other people have experienced them, too, but they just don't know what the heck's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's an aspect of our chi or prana, basically, you know, that kind of gets activated in a certain frequency. Um, but, uh, yeah, and certainly, you know, again, doing heart-brain coherence can really help that. And, you know, it's like like the root center, you know, because kundalini, you know, in kundalini yoga practice, hey, it's really in, in the sacral, and it kind of comes down to the root and up the spine. But, uh it, uh, different teachers have different takes, but it's basically you know that that energy that resides in those lower chakras. Basically, um, I'm saying I'm going to lose power shortly. Well, if, if oh we no, no, that's okay. Well, if we can continue. I'll just go off the. I'll go on to the device <laughs> audio and plug in. That, that's not a problem. It that's starts hilarious. with twenty percent, so we're, we're you know we're still good for a while, but uh. <laughs> Well, we're, we're, Hey, it's on time. We're coming towards actually the end right about now. Uh, people are saying hello. So, uh, Hi. hello uh, from Michelle. Uh, someone's asking if either one of us is a Leo. Um, that's nice. <laughs> yes. I, Leo, sun You're and Leo. moon. I'm not a Leo. <laughs> you have a Leo somewhere. You have to, if you've, if, I, have, I would um, imagine. I have Sag rising, so it's not Leo, but I'm Libra with Sag and, and, and Aquarius and, uh, I'm That's what it is. House. I'm trying to think. Do I have fifth house stuff? Not really. People, people who feel called to um, like present, right? Um, yeah. 
whether oh, it's in group. Strong Leo, yeah. Well, they also often have a strong Sagittarius too. There's a lot of actors that have a lot yeah, of Sagittarius. Yeah. So Bruce that's what... triple Sag. Yes, yes. Oh, you said what? I missed Bruce that for Bruce whatever reason. Triple Sagittarius. Oh wow! And a lot of oh, times, wow. that Sagittarius energy is is extreme, like like talent in a certain area. There's another example of somebody. God, who it was? Anyways, <laughs> anyway. Hey, no, no, no. I can like I'm thinking about like a sprinkling of like a lot of different actors. Uh, off yeah, the top of my head, oh, yeah, and I forget yeah. Where their Sagittarius is 100, percent but there's yeah, it's a it's it's a big thing. The Sagittarius really helps them because they just they just act, you know, like on their whim. They're like, I have to do this, right? Like I'm pulled to this. Um, so that I think is the energy. So. Oh my <laughs> everyone's coming and asking questions i love it but we are at the end which is crazy it goes by so so fast so oh, um quarter after wow i know so people can find you on your websites and also on your youtube channel um before we leave i always um share um to to, to put it back into the um the guests um, wisdom of what would you like to um, just leave the audience with, whether it is like a, a poem, uh, a card pull, an inspirational thought that you have, um, whatever comes to mind. Yeah, well, firstly, you know, everybody know you're going to be okay. You know, the world's changing. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of strife. Again, the more in your heart that you can be, the more in the eye of the storm you're going to be, the more in your power you're going to be. So the more you can be in your heart and stay in your heart, then you're, you're naturally protected from what's going on around you and out, out there to understand that there's certain forces that want to control us, that want to centralize everything in the world. Most of us are aware of that. And if we're not, people are becoming aware of that. But... The heart cannot be programmed. The subconscious mind can get programmed, but our hearts are immune to programming. So that means the more in your heart you are, the more resistant you are to the programming that happened on many, many subtle levels. They want us to think, act, and behave in a certain way that's diminishing to our power, diminishing to our spirit, and diminishing to our growth. Because the more, the less aware we are and the less in our power we are, the more that, that we can be controlled. And whether you believe in like, say, extraterrestrials like bad ETs or whatever, you can chalk it up to human nature. It doesn't have to be anything out there that look at human history in the last three, 4,000 years. Somebody's always wanted to conquer somebody else and control them. So that's what's going on on a much grander scale now. So my best inspiration is be in your heart, practice being in your heart every day be in your compassion, be in your love. And that's not to say you won't react or you won't have moments where you're pulled into the negativity I am. I don't expect you guys to be any different. But the more you can be in your heart, the more resistant you are to the programming and the more you're going to gracefully awaken to higher levels of consciousness and being and to find your gifts in this new earth, in this changing and evolving earth and into this ascended earth vibration that we're coming into now. Absolutely. Um, you know, just the way that you talk about it, uh, be in your heart, be in your power. That said, Adam, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Absolutely. With that said, everybody, please go with love, luck, light, laughter, and don't forget to live. We will see you on Friday for the reading show. Take care. And again, awesome. thanks, Adam. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening to us. The truth is here and now on WLTKDB Talk Radio at WLTKDB.com.